Hi everyone, I'm Tammy Mao, the Lab Instruction Manager for the Department of Integrative Biology. And I'm thankful for this opportunity to present a few short videos about our project, Integrative Biology Takes Remote Learning Outside. In IB, this is what our classroom can look like. We had a bit of a challenge when COVID hit and we were forced into remote learning. And this is because our field and lab courses are very much experiential. Here you see students in the weather, carrying their quadrats and nets, ready to measure and observe. Our courses are skills-based. They learn tools and techniques. They are literally hands-on. They can occur in labs or be outside, even in very remote places. Lastly, our courses are places where a community is built. Longtime friendships are often made here. So our challenge is how do we replicate this in the time of COVID? And I'm so thankful for the change maker technology innovation grants that really helped us meet that challenge. We did a few things. We designed a, a website where our instructors could come to innovate. We provided ideas for technology and uh, techniques. But one of the best things that we did was just to fund graduate students for their ingenuity and hard work. I wanna highlight three innovations from two of our field courses and one of our lab courses. So let's get outside. All the pictures that we took in the botanical garden, um, we used to create like an online site uh, that the students could see during the, during the lab period and also in their own time. And we, uh, we use these pictures as well to uh, evaluate in each of the quizzes or the midterms. And, and also, um, uh, they, need, they use these pictures to make their own drawings. In this class, we usually uh, make, make a drawing component that they need to draw all the plants and learn the plants in that way. Um, so uh, all uh, the pictures that we created in this in this class uh, were used for drawing purposes. I think a very unique thing about the Ethnobotany Lab is that we have a lot of hands-on activities, and that's something definitely that students missed from having to be in this online virtual world with us. But the way we came at it was we decided to record all these activities that we would typically do with them in lab. Things from creating your own lip balm, your tinctures, uh, other alcohol-based extractions, um, cream, softs, uh, tea blends, and you name it. There's many activities that we did in, in class to try to engage with them through their senses on how are all these plants that we study not only very common to use in your daily life. The idea was through these demos, uh, video demos that we prepare for them, so that they would get an idea that they can actually do these things too in the comfort of their own home. And some of the students are actually trying some of these preparations out for their group presentations. All the products that we made during these video demos were the products that were placed in their care packages. So it was a win-win overall for both the students and us. Hi, I'm uh, Isaac Crone, and I am the head GSI for human anatomy this year uh, mm -hmm. during COVID. We had to take the class all online this year, which is very difficult transition for a class that is first off a lab class and second a class that uh, relies a lot on spatial thinking and learning to recognize structures in the human body. So one of the things that I wanted to do and uh, have been pretty successful in so far is getting students to use their hands to actually uh, learn anatomy. And instead of, you know, palpating structures and going through the cadaver like we would in a normal year, uh, I wanted students to draw things out since that's something that uh, I've always heard students say is very helpful to them. So uh, every week I had a couple short, maybe 10 minute uh, drawing lessons on structures that we were going over that week. And I tried to make it something that would be very easy 
just visually for students to replicate, making those structures myself, uh, drawing them all out um, from the simplest, largest degree of organization to the smallest degree of organization. So for instance, in the skull, going from just drawing the uh, cranial skeleton versus the facial skeleton, and then going in and drawing the major features in the bones, and finally going in and filling in the foramina and all of these little details. I think it worked very well for students, and I got some good feedback from students just saying that these were good resources. I think we'll keep them around in future iterations of this course. Like everybody in this COVID pandemic, we um, really want to try to make the best of a really bad situation. And um, I especially felt a lot of responsibility to this group of students. Um, you know, thinking about that they have been isolated in their homes, away from their friends, uh, some of them isolated from their family members, um, and trying to finish their education. You know, especially you know, in my class, it's a lot of seniors. So this is really often their last year at Cal. And um, I just felt an enormous responsibility for those students to try to give them the best experience that I could. And I knew that the way the students really engage with uh, the learning is to be outside and to really immerse themselves in um, learning their trees and shrubs and woody vines, uh, learning their names, learning how um, they vary um, in different places across California. And so I had to think about how could I replicate that um, in this really strange year where we weren't allowed to congregate, we weren't allowed to be together in a group. Um, and I thought the best way to do it was um, to make sure that the students had access to the places that we were going to go learn the plants. And so I, I required the students to be uh, present in the Bay Area. I set up field trips for them where they could go on their own um, or in you know, small groups, uh, socially distanced, of course, um, and learn, learn the plants. Um, and, and to do that, it required a lot of work uh, for myself and, and Isaac, the graduate student instructor, um, to go to the, those parks ahead of time um, and record videos to explain how to identify the plants that we were learning that week um, and then set up a quiz for them where it's like a scavenger hunt where sometimes we use little bits of flagging tape, sometimes we use um, natural landmarks in the, in the, in the, on the trails um, and the students find the plants and tell me what they are to kind of quiz themselves and make sure that they're learning. And uh, so far we've learned uh, over I think about 110 species, 120 species of woody plants. The students have really um, really gotten a lot out of being able to go outside. They just report, you know, just being so overjoyed to be outside and away from their computer, um, engaging in the material, engaging in learning the plants, engaging in learning about uh, the outdoors. Um, and so it's been uh, worthwhile for the students and um, it's, I, feel, I feel like it's been a success.